In this video, we're gonna be checking out some of the best shoes coming our way in early 2021. Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to 40 Runs. How are we all doing? Let me know in the comments which shoes you're most looking forward to in 2021. Before we get into the video, I want you to get down in those comments and tell me which ones you're most looking forward to. Are you actually looking to replace uh, your favorite daily trainer? Maybe you wanna get yeah, a pair of carbon plated shoes. Let me know in the comments and I'll dive down there once this video drops. Now, before we get into the main part of the video, I wanna give credit to all the pictures and the people um, that I've used from Instagram or from YouTube or from running blogs and all that sort of stuff. I'm gonna put um, against each picture who's uh, credited for the picture. Make sure if it's on Instagram, you, you follow that person, you like their stuff. Uh, if it's on YouTube, obviously subscribe to their channel, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I just wanna say thank you to all the people's uh, pictures and I will credit them down in the description, so check them out. Right, with that out, the way uh, let's get into some of the uh, shoes that I'm most looking forward to in early part of 2021 right so early 2021 is gonna be busy there's gonna be loads of shoes coming out uh, in particularly in February um, I think the most obvious one to talk about first though is the glide ride 2 Right, so now if you're new to the channel, I was a massive, or I still am a massive fan of the Glide Ride, the Asics Glide Ride. I absolutely love that shoe. It's my favorite long run shoe. Um, and if I could live in them uh, and sleep in them, I would. Mrs. Forty wouldn't be happy with me wearing them in bed, but if I could, I would. Uh, and number two is, uh, is finally sort of on its way, let's say. I've seen some uh, videos already of it, and there's a lot of pictures on Instagram about the shoe. Uh, it looks like from what I've seen, the shoe uh, has mainly changed in terms of upper and, and look uh, versus the uh, original. The upper looks a little bit more, let's say, sophisticated. Uh, it looks a little bit softer and a little bit more stretchier. So hopefully it'll give us a better feel, although there's nothing wrong with the original. Um, it still maintains the five mil drop. Uh, it obviously is a um, guide sole technology promoting it with a rocker. So you're getting that nice smooth transition from heel to toe, but with the guide sole technology, which is all about reducing um, ankle movement and creating efficiencies in your foot strike and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's still got a um, hardened EVA plate in it. So again, helping you with that motion going through on the shoe. It's gained some weight. It was quite fat anyway, but apparently it's gained some weight and I think that comes mainly from the increased um, amount of foam they've used in the midsole because it increases in stack height slightly apparently. Uh, it looks like it's still got the um, flight foam um, on the midsole which is good news. The um, sort of, what's the best way to describe it, the look of it I think it looks just a little bit more updated, a little bit more sort of in line with the way ASICs are going. I think it looks pretty cool personally. But yeah, I just, it, it seems from what, I, from what I've uh, watched and read about it that it's, it's maintained what was the core part of the ASICs uh, glide ride, which was a, a shoe that was a, a decent platform in which to run long miles comfortably and easily. Right, so the next shoe I'm looking forward to is the 1080 version 11 from New Balance. Now, the original version, um, I wasn't really feeling it. A lot of people really dig that shoe, and I wasn't really feeling it. And I'm not sure why that was. I think because I was so into my glide rides and, and some of the shoes from Nike, I kind of easily dismissed it, um, which may not have been the fairest thing to do um, back then. But it was, it was still quite a high stack height and still quite, I found a firmish ride, even though it's meant to be a softer ride. Um, the new version's got the Fresh Foam X in it again. Uh, it's gonna be similar sort of price point. Nine point something ounces, so 10 ounces, 283 grams. Um, you'll be, obviously, like I said, you've got that high stack height. And, and the biggest change probably is the, the new um, sort of stretch knit upper from what I've seen, which it looks like it's got a lot more ventilation, which is good news. They've changed some of the overlays. You've got the structure down the side with the sort of, uh, instead of the stitching, they've removed some of that and stuck overlays on it. But yeah, I think the biggest change is the, um, is the upper from the looks of things. So I'm gonna give it another go. Uh, and that's the point what I'm trying to make. I'm gonna give it another go. I know Alan's got a pair of them and he really likes them. I, I think they look awesome. Um, but the, again, it comes back to what I just said a second ago. It, it for me, fits into that sort of longer run shoe um, and I have always been in love with the glide ride so it's like do I need it don't I need it kind of thing but I'm going to get them I'm going to give it a try and we'll let you know how I get on with them. Right next up is the Nike Zoom X Invincible. Firstly I think this has got one of the most awesome names uh, of the year so take my hat off to Nike for coming up with an awesome name the Invincible. It just sounds wicked. Um, I think it looks cool it looks like a sort of 
Nike Myler has had a bad night out and, and then sort of trashed everything and then turned into a sort of Nike Infinity and then they've created this baby and it's sort of like mixed up and come out as the Invincible. Make any sense? See what I mean? I mean, the pictures, um, and I've seen loads of pictures uh, on Instagram now, it, it looks good in some pictures and in some other ones it just looks like a Nike Myler. So it'll be interesting to see when we get it in hand. The long short of it is this looks like a max cushioned um, daily trainer, a lightweight daily trainer from Nike. They've stuck ZoomX in it, which is their most responsive um, uh, phone, mid-cell phone um, that they use. Obviously, you get it in the, their faster shoes. You ZoomX on there. Um, and I, I do wonder whether they put a carrier foam in it like they did with the Vomero. They put that, what was it? I can't even remember the name of it, but it was the foam from the Joyride. I wonder if they put... Um, a carrier foam in there just to protect the Zoom X a little bit. Be interesting to see whether it's full Zoom X. Uh, the upper looks good. Uh, it looks, uh, say, say, borrowed over from some of the other shoes. And it definitely looks more cushioned in terms of foam around the heel area um, than, say, an Infinity, a Nike uh, React Infinity. So they've kind of um, got bits of everything. So you've got like the sort of um, lightness, you've got the sort of comfort of a miler, you've got the Zoom X uh, from the Vomero, um, and you've got like the upper from the Flyknit. So it just looks like it's a combination of everything to create this max cushion lightweight shoe that I have to say, I'm really excited to try out. Next up is the Socony Kinvara 12. Now I always say this wrong, let me know in the comments if I have said it wrong. Now this shoe, uh, there's loads of videos on YouTube, you can check it out for yourself, but it's not here in the UK, and it is one that I really wanna get my hands on um, in 2021, early doors when it does drop. And the reason for that is because it, it reminds me very much of the Evo ride. It's a low drop, um, lightweight, sort of up-tempo, um, daily trainer. It's, it's along the lines of the Prism from New Balance as well, but I just feel like it, with the power run, it's gonna be probably a slightly more stable ride than the Prism. The Prism's not an, uh, particularly unstable, but with the with the, the, the fuel cell in that, it can be you know a little bit unstable in places. It's got, it's not got medial post, it's got some form of mild stability, the way they built it up um, on the medial side, if you look at the pictures of it, but it, it can, some people do say it's a slightly mild um, stability shoe um, versus some of the others out there. So I'm kind of interested in it. They've done some updates with the upper. I think it looks awesome, by the way. You can see the heel counters are on there. So again, they've gone for stability. But I just like the low drop, uh, the lightness. Um, I forgot it on my notes what it's coming in at. Yeah, eight ounces. I mean, I mean, what's not to love about eight ounces in a, in a, in a up-tempo daily running shoe? As I said, it's, it just makes me think of the evo ride and the evo ride is going to have from asics have a new update as well which is coming really soon along with the glide ride too but uh, because of my love affair with Socony at the moment i am swayed towards this convero or convaro whatever you call it 12. next up is the adidas ultra boost 21 and this could drop any time um we traditionally do it like end of end of the year start of the year so it should be like it could even be with us now um by the time this video drops but the um, 2021 looks like they've done some more changes to it. Last year's model was just a non-event. And, and, and this is the problem for me with Adidas. I, I, I wanna love them, and obviously I love the SL20. Um, and I really wanna get into Adidas, but I really struggle with them. They just, they, I don't know, they just don't set my pulse racing at all. Um, there's nothing sexy about the shoes, uh, even though, don't get me wrong, as I said, I like the SL20 and I liked the Adios Pro, the carbon plated racing shoe. So I'm, I'm interested to look and get the Ultra Boost 21. Uh, they made some changes to it. They played around with the torsion bar, uh, torsion system. They've uh, updated the Prime Knit Plus upper. Uh, they've uh, modified the Boost midsole again, so that'd be interesting. Uh, to see what that comes back. They've added more um, heel structure and they've obviously stuck some continental rubber on it because it's Adidas. But yeah, I, I'd be interested to see what they've done with the Boost. Again, never been a huge fan of the Boost. Um, it just, Boost makes it sound like it's gonna be awesome. But you put them on and it's not really much at it. It doesn't really give me much. So I'm super excited to try the Ultra Boost. Obviously it's gonna be expensive because it's an Adidas. Um, so they'll come down in price once they flood the market with with loads of them. Um, but yeah, and also be interesting to see what colorways they're coming because obviously Adidas have been dropping everything in bright yellow at the moment. And then I think they're going triple white and all this sort of stuff. It should be here soon. I will try it and hopefully I like it. Right now the, the sort of last shoot I'm gonna talk about 
and it's this, <laughs> even though this is sort of start of 2021, but it's the one that could come in the spring, allegedly, but it probably come in the summer, who knows? And this is the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent 2. Now, if you Google that, or if you look on Instagram, there's loads of pictures of it. And it's the updated version of the Vaporfly. Um, why am I excited and interested about it? Well, because the first one was just an epic, epic shoe. But the major change, really, is the upper. The upper is gonna, they're gonna be basically ditching the vapor weave and they're gonna be going for something more of a mm, fly knit, atom knit combo. Uh, it looks like it's definitely lighter feeling. It's definitely a, a more breathable material. There's plenty of ventilation in there and it just looks like it's a little bit more snug, more comfortable fit versus the um, vapor weave that was out on the original shoe. They've also added um, some slight bit of structure to the front of the shoe. I know uh, there was one of the major complaints, people were ripping the front of the shoe. It was not the best. Um, and they sort of looks like, and I don't know if this is true or not, they've added a little bit of comfort in terms of a slight layer of foam around the tongue area and that sort of stuff, just to make it a little bit more comfortable, even though it's a racing shoe. So it'd be interesting to see what it actually comes like. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really hard, isn't it? That's like one of the best shoes, if not the best shoe ever made, I think, in terms of uh, racing shoes. And how do you sort of improve that? So yeah, it's going to be very interesting. It still maintains the Zoom X, which is awesome with the carbon plate. It's going to weigh as much as like a piece of paper. Uh, and it's going to be awesome. And we know it's going to be awesome. But yeah, that's going to be coming at some point in 2021, I'm guessing earlier. But the only thing I think that may hold that up potentially is because of the lack of races and stuff like that. I'm a Nike, Nike, sorry. Um, it's great if I could say Nike. But Nike um, tend to release this stuff around races and, and trials and qualifying and stuff like that. And because of what's going on in the world, that may all you know, be up in the air when, when um, all the qualifying and trials and, and all that sort of stuff take place. So I don't know exactly about when it's going to be released. But when it does, I'm going to be buying a pair. And the sort of Brucey bonus shoe at the end, uh, which I just quickly want to talk about, is the Socony Endorphin uh, shoes. They're going to be mildly updated, uh, in particularly the Speed, the Speed 2. I saw something the other day. It's going to have a slight twist uh, to the upper and a few minor tweaks to it. But they are going to be updating it. Um, and it looks similar, mostly identical to the original. I'm guessing they'll just play around with the colorways and stuff like that. But I, I get what they're doing with the um, upper, trying to make it more smooth, more sort of stretchy a little bit so it can be a little bit more forming to the foot uh, and that little bit more comfortable, even though I had absolutely no problem. Actually, they're there with the upper on the original, um, but I can see the sort of way they want to go. It'd be interesting whether they, I'll just grab them, whether they do anything to the outsole at all uh, and change that slightly, I don't know. I don't necessarily, they need to, um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see what they do with the Speed 2, but that is coming at some point, but I don't know when that's coming. So there you go, guys. They're the shoes that I'm looking forward to getting my hands on uh, in early 2021. Obviously, there's going to be loads of shoes. You're going to have the new Pegasus 38 coming. Um, you're going to have, oh, I mean, where do you start? I've got the React Myler 2. You've got new versions of everything coming. Uh, you know, it's just a machine that's constantly, constantly going at us. But I say, these are the ones that I'm really interested um, at the start of the year, particularly when I'm into marathon training. These are the ones I'm looking to get my hands on. Ideally, you know, the Glide Ride 2 fits for me for my long runs. Uh, I'm looking at the 1080 um, as a sort of standing for the Glide Ride. The Kinvara 12, just for those sort of up-tempo, um, sort of, you know, 5 to 10K, 5 to 15K runs, you know, you want to pick it up. Uh, a nice lightweight, low drop uh, shoe to go on, but I might even get the Evo Ride 2. You've got the uh, ZoomX Invincible Max Cushion, so that'd be awesome for like those recovery days is what I'm thinking. Um, and then what was the other one? And then obviously the Ultra Boost 21. Again, good daily trainer potentially. Will it replace my Socony Ride 13? There's gonna be a new ride coming out as well. So you know what I mean? There's, there's a lot of things up in the air, but as a shoe geek, I think 2021 is gonna be one of the best yet.